Thank you for being here this evening. I'd like to call the City Council regular meeting to order on Tuesday, December 5th, 2017. Uh, at this time, uh, we're going to move to an invocation by Pastor Francisco Arboleda uh, from Shiloh Fellowship, after which I will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd all rise, please. Good evening. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that we get to participate in. We bless this meeting. We bless the mayor, the vice mayor, and all the city uh, council members who so devotedly bless our city and are dedicated to our city. We bless every citizen of Maricopa. We decree that this is a prosperous city with a glorious future. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your wisdom and your peace tonight in these meetings. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you may be seated. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. We appreciate your, your service to us this evening. Uh, we'll move to the roll call, please. Councilmember Chapados? Here. Councilwoman Gussie? Here. Councilmember Manfredi? Here. Councilmember Smith? Here. Councilmember Wade? Here. Vice Mayor Brown? Here. Mayor Price? Here. Mr. Mayor, we have to Great, thank you. Uh, if you're looking at the agenda here, uh, we have something that's a little bit different than we normally have on here. This is uh, item three, which is 3.1. The mayor and city council shall discuss and select uh, the, the selection of a vice mayor from among the members of the city council. Uh, council, just to set the stage here, as you recall, uh, last year we changed the city code a bit to uh, allow for uh, more members of the city council to potentially have the opportunity to uh, be vice mayor instead of doing a two-year terms. Now, it's up to you how you decide that you wish to proceed with that. Uh, I typically leave that in your hands, but uh, uh, as you know, uh, you know, I think it's an, a great opportunity for a variety of different people. So uh, with that, uh, I would compliment Vice Mayor Brown. Thank you for standing in for all the meetings that I asked you to stand in for me here this year. And uh, if you wanted to say a few words there, to, just to lead that off. Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. I, I would just like to express what a honor and privilege it has been to serve this council in this city as vice mayor. I've enjoyed these various conferences within the state of Arizona as well as outside. And as you mentioned, uh, representing you at the Canadian uh, Bus Arizona Business Council was a real pleasure. So uh, with that, I would like to uh, make a motion, Mr. Mayor, to appoint someone that I've known for many years and someone I had the pleasure of appointing, Parks Rec and Library some years ago, and who now serves as a colleague, and that person would be Councilmember Peggy Chapados. There's a uh, so there's a motion and a second for Councilmember Chapados. Uh, Council, uh, further discussion on this or other other motions you'd like to lay on the floor. This time, uh, if seeing no one, then uh, I will move to a vote. Then there is a motion and a second. Uh, for Councilmember Peggy Chapados to be Vice Mayor. And with that, I would call for all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion carries. All right, congratulations. So uh, if you'll indulge me, we're gonna, I know we just got started, but we're gonna take a five minute break here because we're going to switch a few things around. Uh, typically what happens is you switch the seating. Uh, the way this works is that the newest members of council sit on the outside and then you move in closer. The vice mayor always sits on the right of the mayor and then the most senior go on out. So we are going to basically flip flop these two and uh, if any of you'd like to come up and pass along your congratulations, you're welcome to do so. <laughs>
I know what I'm talking about. It's a video. Go ahead and uh, reconvene here. Again, congratulations, uh, Vice Mayor Chapados. Uh, and again, thank you, uh, Councilmember Brown, for uh, all of your help in these past years. Uh, at this time, we'd like to move to uh, item four, proclamations, acknowledgements, and awards. Do you have a proclamation at this time? Is uh, Donna Davis in the audience? Come on up. So Donna is uh, with Expect More Arizona, and uh, we have a proclamation here tonight. It says, uh, whereas the City of Maricopa Council recognizes education must be made a top priority in our communities to ensure a strong and economic future and higher quality of life for everyone. And whereas the City of Maricopa City Council understands that future economic workforce demands uh, will require more than a high school diploma. And only 42% of American, excuse me, Arizona adults currently pos possess a degree certificate or industry credential. Uh, whereas the City of Maricopa City Council recognizes the need to improve educational attainment across the state and in our local communities and supports the statewide attainment goal by, of 60% by 2030. And whereas Expect More Arizona and the Center for the Future of Arizona Statewide is a nonpartisan organization, have launched an Arizona Education Progress Meter by which the progress on attainment and other key education indicators can be measured. Now, therefore, I, Christian Price, Mayor of the City of Maricopa, do hereby proclaim the City of Maricopa uh, that we, and our council that we support the statewide attainment goal of 60% by 2030. We support the use of Arizona Education Progress Meter as the tool to make progress towards the attainment goal by tracking the priority indicators for our local communities. And we affirm that the city's status as a world-class education partner with Expect, Expect More Arizona and the Center for the Future of Arizona in order to advance this shared vision for our education and for our students. So with that, we want to congratulate Donna for all the work that you do and say thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, uh, that will take us to item five, which is the report from the mayor. Uh, Peg, I think you had a few comments in the report from the mayor section. So. Thank you, Mayor. There's a lot of stuff going on this weekend, so if you guys are uh, hungry for action, there's multiple events that I want to share with you. Maricopa Marketplace will be held this Saturday from 9 to 2. That will be in the MCE parking lot. We also have the Maricopa Arts Festival, formerly known as Art on the Veranda. That will be at the Duke, and those hours are from 10 to 5. We also have uh, something you'll hear a little bit more about during Call to the Public. Maricopa concert, Christmas concert, is going to be Saturday night. And I won't steal their thunder. I'll let them tell you their event. We also have this Saturday Ride with the Toy with Maricopa Medical and Fire over at Pecana Park. Um, that is going to be from 10 to 2 p.m. And then also something that you've heard myself and Councilmember Smith talk about, our 2018 Senior Info Expo is coming up. And Mayor, if I may be permitted, we have a short promo video to share with you all tonight. All means. I'm Councilmember Peg Chapito, standing in front of Maricopa City Hall to invite you all to the third annual Senior Info Expo, Saturday, January 20th, 2018, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come on out and join us for some great workshops, some exciting exhibitors, and lots of things to see and do. 
This is the Senior Info Expo, and we're really excited about it because it gives us seniors or those individuals that are caring uh, for their parents or perhaps they're a caregiver to be able to come out and understand where they can get all the information and resources that they might need. And this opportunity allows us to put it all in one spot and for them to be able to find out where to go and who to contact as they go forward with it. Seniors need to know what is available, uh, what resources are available, what services they can use. So we try to provide that and this is one way of doing that to give them an idea that there is help out there, that they are not alone. This is our third annual Senior Info Expo. It's a way to get resources and information directly into the hands of those that are either dealing with senior issues or maybe a caregiver that has somebody that they're taking care of. It's presented by the Age Friendly Committee. We've got various city departments participating as well as some outside companies and vendors. I am with Pinal Healy Council for Senior Citizens, your local area agency on aging. We believe that this is needed in every community and every community does not do this. So we're really excited that this can be replicated throughout the, the two county area. Okay, so I, I think it's wonderful. This is one of the places that you can go where you have all types of resources for our seniors in our community and really even some other folks like you can get a hearing aid test or you can get a blood pressure test or a blood sugar test. Come out for the fun, come out for the camaraderie and come out for all of the knowledge that we have here to share with folks. I think it's wonderful. I, I think we should do more of it. <laughs> Love it, love it. It's a good thing that they do very good work for our people. I love it. It gives me an opportunity or a platform to talk with everybody, young and old, to talk about this path that we're all going to be on. This is a way to come to one space, Maricopa City Hall, Saturday, January 20th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's a free event, open to everybody in Maricopa. Come on out, get some great resources, hear some wonderful workshops, and play a few games. See you on January 20th. Good job. Thank you very much. Um, as you know, there is so much going on. We had a successful Mary Copa. I hope you all had a very uh, successful uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Um, we had a council meeting right prior to that, and so uh, this has been nonstop thing after thing after thing. So I know between staff and uh, council members and everything else, it's been uh, very, very busy. Uh, the one thing I wanted to uh, announce to the city council and to um, you know the, the public at large is that. And I, I can't remember if I talked about it last time, but uh, at the groundbreaking for the 347 overpass, um, and I know uh, Supervisor Smith is here. I failed to recognize him earlier. Uh, hi, Supervisor. How are you? I uh, apologize. I know you're going to speak here. I'll call the public here in just a moment. But um, one of the things that is you, you may be aware of is that the uh, RTA, or Regional Transit Authority, that went to the ballot here recently passed. And, and with that, it basically gives $30 million towards the 347 uh, in the Pinal County portion. Well, I had the opportunity to uh, speak with Director Halikowski of ADOT and uh, spoke with him about, you know, what is the value of that and what can we do and uh, he immediately approached me talking along with Ak Chen about how we can partner and speak a little bit more in depth with the river and what ADOT can do and so uh, the first portion of it is dealing with the federal government and dealing with the studies that are required there it's called the NEPA studies which is the National Environmental Protection Act and so you have to do those studies to see what you can do and that's not just for our portion but for the entire road and so that leads to design and it leads to environmental assessment and it leads to you know the, the next phase which is actually construction or, or money allocation and construction and so it, again it puts us in a very good position for an, a future tiger grant and so uh, again talking overpasses talking lane expansions uh, but basically just talking the entire road in general so uh, again I just wanted to report to you what your money is doing uh, it's a long process it's not fast it takes time but again without the money it wouldn't have even be on this stage or, or step because there are so many other projects that ADOT has that are priorities over this one, I-17, I-10 widening, Puerto Mariposa, which is the Highway 89, you have $10 billion worth of, you know, goods and services that come through that. So, you know, while it's important to us, it's not one of the state's highest priorities, but when you come to the table with money, it gets moved up that list real fast. And so, uh, again, just wanted to give you an update on that. And then yesterday I had the opportunity to meet with a group of uh, leaders 
That was kind of a who's who. Uh, had lunch with Kirk Adams, uh, who is the governor's chief of staff. Uh, had the opportunity to meet with several of our corporation commissioners and uh, uh, several members of the House of Representatives and the Senate. Um, and the idea behind all that was to just kind of make them aware. Uh, several mayors were there. And the idea was that we would you know, make them aware of what we're trying to accomplish as cities and you know what each of us are trying to do. And they gave us some of the things that are on the docket for this year, uh, challenges with uh, water. The governor, I don't know if you know this, but uh, you know we all have our challenges at times with global and we've sat in this room many times with global water and heard about the complaints but at the same time we also Pinal County has a real challenge when it comes to water and uh, we happen to live in a city and, and believe it or not with a company that has a purple pipe everywhere and that really gives us an advantage over almost everyone else in Pinal County and uh, that's really great because as we want to continue to build we can uh, many places will not find that that's so easy in Pinal County and throughout the rest of the state. And so the governor's making that a priority on how to fix some of those water issues. Um, some of the other things, of course, is the budget. Uh, and uh, you know, promptly afterwards, Dale will get a kick out of this, but David Farnsworth came up to me after the meeting and immediately told me about three bills that we as cities were not going to like. Now, I, I take that as a good and bad thing because I think if he's given us a heads up warning, I told him, well, we'll be sure to tell you what we don't like about the bills and then we'll try and work to find a happy middle ground. And he seemed all right with that. So, you know, again, it's about building those relationships and it's about finding that middle ground so that while we don't always get to pick and choose what the legislation is, we can certainly agree with it, we can fight against it, or we can work together to really kind of make the very best policy possible. So just wanted to let you know again what Maricopa is up to and what we're doing to keep our little segment of the world and of Pinal County in front of the governor's office and the House and the Senate, uh, the Corporation Commission, and build those relationships so that when we do have challenges and problems, we have someone and a direct line of access to go to rather than just having to sit back and not get the things done that we need to, to have to serve our constituents. So that's my report at this time, and we'll move to a report from the city manager. Well, Honorable Mayor, council members, uh, we have one item to report to you today. For those of you who were not able to attend Mary Copa, I believe we have a short uh, video, and interim community development uh, manager, our director, Fred Gray, will be introduced. Fred? Thank you, Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council. Uh, happy holidays in Mary Copa. As the manager indicated, and as been mentioned previously, we had a successful Maricopa this past Saturday. Uh, other than the sales of hot chocolate, I think it was a pretty successful event. It's nothing like 85 degrees to get you into the holiday spirit. So with that, we'll introduce the uh, video. here at the 2017 Mary Copa Holiday Festival. Absolutely amazing this year. Great turnout. We have real snow, synthetic ice rink, bounce houses for the kids. This is a great time out here. I, this, is, this is such a cool thing that the city does. We've been coming out here for years. Always a good time. Lots of stuff for the kids to do. Just tons of fun. Everybody should come out. We have music, entertainment, there is food, there's booths, there's all kind of exciting stuff to do here at Mary Copa. This is an annual event. We ended off with a tree lighting ceremony with Mayor Price, 80 degrees in December, wearing shorts and playing in the snow. That can only happen in Arizona. our second Mary Copa and we plan to make it a family tradition. Lots of dancing and fun music, a lot of interacting. It's very fun. Come out next year. Yeah, you guys should definitely come out next year. It's an awesome event. One of my favorite events, hands down. Mary Copa. 
So if you miss this event this year, I'd highly recommend you put it on the calendars. It's the first Saturday of December every year. Totally encourage you guys to come out next year and Merry Christmas! It goes without, goes without saying that it takes a lot of work and uh, planning and organization for an event like this to come off. So I want to thank our staff who put this together. We had help and assistance from other departments as well. Thank you for those of you who attended, and we look forward to uh, continuing on next year. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, I would also like to recognize Jennifer Brand and her staff who put on some amazing videos uh, for us, and they just do an outstanding uh, job. And, you know, I can't guarantee it, but I may be able to help you out with some real snow next year. <laughs> <laughs> I will reserve the remainder of my time for our next uh, council meeting, so get your popcorn ready uh, for this section of it. But that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to hit something there. I know, I know you're uh, probably going to talk a little bit more at the next city council meeting, but. Uh, um, just by way of info again, um, if you've read the agenda, there's uh, an item on here that may be a little confusing to some, but uh, City Manager Gregory Rose has uh, taken a, a position in Missouri, and so uh, he will be serving with us uh, here at this council meeting, and perhaps the next one as well, uh, the 19th, and uh, then he'll be, he'll be headed to Missouri. So uh, I just wanted to wish him well and thank him, and uh, uh, if you give him a big round of applause for all the work he's done here. That will take us to the call to the public at this time. I have several speaker cards, so we're going to go through these. Uh, I know we have uh, quite a few, so as you know, we have a timer up here that'll maintain kind of the three-minute three uh, time frame. So uh, with that, we'll lead off with uh, Judith Zamon. Thank you, Mayor Price. Good evening. Good evening to our outgoing and incoming vice mayors, and to the other members of the city council, officials, and neighbors in Maricopa. I'm here tonight wearing my hat as co-founder and coordinator for Maricopa Music Circle, the city's premier chamber ensemble. The arts usher in December's holiday celebrations culminating this Saturday when Arts Day closes with a spectacular musical flourish in Maricopa Music Circle's richly packed Grand Holiday Concert. Maricopa Music Circle, as I said, the premier chamber orchestra in town, is joined by guest artists, dancers from Desert Sun Performing Arts, and Maricopa Chorus Carolers to make the event a feast for both ears and eyes. There will be projections, caroling and dancing added to seasonal orchestral favorites both familiar and new, combining great melody and intriguing sprightly rhythms to convey the many moods of Christmas time. Those Christmas time moods include mystery, beauty, joy, pageantry, and celebration, and they percolate throughout the rich musical evening this Saturday night. The uh, program includes the entire Nutcracker Suite, the very first time it is being performed live in Maricopa, plus an additional movement from the ballet, and many of these movements will be danced, as well as performed. Carol's galore, of course, Irving Berlin's Great White Christmas, I'll Be Home for Christmas, in an arrangement by a London string teacher. Hark the Herald Angels Sing, whose familiar melody was actually composed by Felix Mendelssohn in the middle 1800s. It is joined by the words of Charles Wesley, written uh, almost a century before, and the whole thing was put together by a French orchestrator in 2010 for chorus and orchestra, and we are presenting that premiere performance in Maricopa with full organ sound from the two keyboards. 
Um, we have meditations by Gabrielle Faure and Maurice Ravel, some toe-tapping Grieg, and of course, several movements from Handel's monumental oratorio, Messiah, plus lots more. The evening will uh, close with a sing-along for everybody for the Hallelujah Chorus, so bring your scores. We will have them for those people who want to be adventurous and just stand up and sing along. The tunes are great. And then light refreshments where audience and performers can mingle together. Um, I would like to say that Arts Day, December 9th, is preceded during daytime by some of the events that Council Member Peg Chapados mentioned, and specifically the Maricopa Arts Festival, an artisan festival at the Duke, colorful, exciting, from 10 until 5. And that, that day is preceded this Thursday with the opening of Pam Sutton's new art exhibit at NCE. And of course, all of that was preceded tonight with Faces of Maricopa, the candid conceptual art piece by Carl Dietrich that has now been installed in the corridor outside this chamber. We hope to see everybody there. Tickets at $12 and $8 for children. You can buy them at the door or online. Just check out Maricopa Arts Festival, uh, Maricopa Music Circle on Facebook, and Maricopa Arts Council on Facebook for more about the music. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. Appreciate it. <laughs> Next one up is Shelley Gillespie. Get this down at my level here. <laughs> Good evening, Council, Mayor, Mr. Rose, Ms. Bueras, and esteemed colleagues and relatives and friends. Um, Copa Schwartz Film Fest, of which I've been spending my life doing the last couple weeks, has some exciting things to share with you. We have just finished choosing all the films and putting them in order, and I can guarantee you there'll be a wonderful event in February for everyone. What I wanted to share with you is some of the inspirational stories, because we've already changed some people's lives. And that is one of those things that makes you feel so good inside, but I wanted to share that. Number one, we have a military category that was replete with wonderful films that are inspirational, emotional, and things that will make you really think. We have some wonderful things that have happened in the community. You may have all seen the program. The cover on the program was done by a, um, a, re a person in, in the community. She's known on this as Mae Tallwing, but you may know her as Dr. Donahue's wife, Mae Donahue. She had not done anything artistic for 20 years. And she was so excited and enthusiastic, she's currently working on our second program. We also had some things that happened with the young students. We had given workshops and they learned. Last year, our middle school films weren't so wonderful. We admitted that, but we chose the best to, to show to everyone. What was exciting was this year, we have some of the same names of people and this time, we had a film as high as 8.7 on the rating scale. So we had some films that are really wonderful in their own right. And it's just so inspiring to know that we are really getting the kids involved and interested. Now, I'm here to ask you a big favor, everyone. We are trying to fund this festival, and there's a lot of parts and moving parts to put in it. We are trying to provide scholarships and sponsorships for the winners of the categories. And so far, it's been a tough year. We've been turned down so far by every single uh, grant we've asked for, except for the Arizona Festival on the Arts. So we are excited about that, but we're yet to see a lot of these funds. So I wanted to ask you, in the spirit of giving, a PayPal giving fund has a special program through the end of the month. And if you go on PayPal giving fund or on our website, where we have a direct link, Anything you contribute, and if everyone could contribute even a few dollars, it would make so much difference. We have the ability to get every penny that that pledge is, plus 1%, and they don't charge us a fee for a change. So if any of you can do that, we would be so grateful because there's still a lot of need, and we want to be able to award people something that will make them feel like they can move forward to the next stage of their career. We hope that you will all help us, and thank you so much. Happy holidays. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
Thank you, Shelley. Uh, Crystal Hoy. Mr. Mayor, City Council members, and residents of Maricopa, on behalf of Festival Director Cowie Wilson, the Maricopa Arts Council, and the Visual Artists of Maricopa, it's my pleasure to invite you to the fourth annual Maricopa Arts Festival. To start off the Maricopa Arts Day, the Maricopa Arts Festival is this Saturday, December 9th, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m at the beautiful outdoor setting of the Duke in Rancho El Dorado. I will be there with original watercolor and acrylic paintings of my own, along with 35 other professional and student artists specializing in metalwork, jewelry, decorated gourds, mosaics, classworks, and photography. Artwork will be on display and for purchase. There will be also be a children's craft area and food and drink specials at the restaurant. Again, um, admission is free, and come see Maricopa's finest artists this Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Duke. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Appreciate it. Uh, next is Rusty Acres. Good evening, everybody. Um, first of all, just want to say congratulations to this city council and especially Mayor Christian Price. So the groundbreaking two weeks ago for the overpass, well done, my friends. Um, I've been here 13 years. It's been a long time coming. I hope it doesn't take 13 years to get 347 widened, but if it does, it does. Um, second of all, uh, Mr. Gregory Rose, it's been a pleasure working with you. We're going to miss you. Uh, I think the city is going to miss you. Um, again, 13 years, I've seen a lot of city managers come and go, and you may be my favorite. So uh, congratulations. Thirdly, our chief staff, Chief Leffler, um, not here, Chief Stahl, uh, first responders in Maricopa, great year. I think 2017 was a great year for our first responders. You guys never get enough thanks. Can we just give them a hand? All right. Fire and police, you guys do a great job. Lastly, I want to promote my events, Living Nativity Community of Hope Church this Saturday night from 5 to 8, and then January 21st, um, the Watoto Children's Choir from Uganda, Africa is coming to town. We've booked the pack over at um, the high school. It's a Sunday night, 7 o'clock. It's absolutely free. Let's fill the place up. Merry Christmas. Awesome. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Rusty. Uh, Supervisor Smith. Thank you and good evening, Mayor Price, Vice Mayor Chapados, isn't that nice to say that, and council members. Well, 2017 is coming to a close very quickly, so I'm looking ahead to 2018 and I wanted to give you a brief report regarding some of the top items I believe that I'm going to be working on and the Board of Supervisors is going to be working on very hard. First of all, the Regional Transportation Authority, the RTA. Wow, Maricopa voters really came through. Uh, them along with the Santan voters in those precincts really made the difference as far as passing that uh, both propositions. Uh, tomorrow, the Board of Supervisors will have a vote to loan one of our transportation experts, Andy Smith, to the RTA. That's basically to help make sure there's a, a, a good jump start on a lot of the things that has to happen uh, in order to establish the RTA in a proper way. The first revenue from the half cent sales tax will be collected on April 1st with those monies finally going to fund the RTA in about May or June. Of course, there's a little bit of a, a time delay once you collect them until the Treasury actually moves them over. But in order to make sure these projects happen on a timely basis, uh, the county is still planning to sell bonds in order to wait, not wait for that little pot to keep filling up, but to go bond <clears throat> just like you would for a mortgage, get a lump sum of money and phase, uh, fund those phase one projects and be able to uh, maybe jumpstart a lot of that design and construction. Uh, Maricopa is certainly very, very well positioned for the phase one projects. We have three 
main projects in phase one. Of course, the widening of 347, the east-west corridor connecting Maricopa with Casa Grande and I-10, given uh, residents and people uh, commuting a different way to get to the I-10. And then finally, looking forward to the future with a West Pinal Freeway, which could possibly be a route for the I-11 connecting Mexico, United States, and Canada. So we're looking very much uh, forward with a lot of activity for the RTA. One of the things we've try, been trying to do and position, uh, which is now being accomplished by master's facility plan. Uh, from five uh, to 10, 15 years, every so often, the county looks at all of our facilities and makes adjustments and try to anticipate the growth in certain areas. Well, we're completing that study by the end of the year. Uh, what I want to accomplish is to, for Western Pinal and the Maricopa, the greater Maricopa areas to expand services and, uh, and some of the facilities. Uh, we want to have services for elections, building permits, uh, the official county facility for District 4, uh, then also perhaps satellite offices for the recorder assessor and the clerk of the court. Also, about six months ago, we expanded or actually uh, we reduced the number of Justice of the Peace districts from nine to six in a cost-saving move. Well, the Maricopa Stanfield district got larger as a result of that. Uh, it expanded through the Gila River and in community 347 all the way out to I-10. So there's going to be an additional caseload that will be in that court. Uh, part of the master's facility plan will be looking at what they do as far as being able to expand that facility. It's already busting at the seams. So we're looking at county related facilities, what we can do best to position uh, Western Pinal and the greater Maricopa area for additional services. And then finally, that which many of you on the council have been involved in is the flood mitigation project uh, the Pinal County is the flood control administrator and the Army Corps of Engineers has been working for years uh, in order to make this a reality. In early 2018, we hope to see the tentatively selected plan. Uh, we've talked about some uh, opportunities for um, flood mitigation and how you can do that. And the, one of the benefits for the city of Maricopa is because we are the area of the highest benefit cost ratio, we are a high priority for a lot of those fixes. So we're looking forward to, for those three projects, there will be many more things to come, but those are big ticket items. And I just wanted to brief the council just to, uh, to give you an idea of what we're looking at for 2018, and thank you. Thank you, Supervisor, we appreciate it. Those are all the speaker cards I have at this moment. If anyone else would like to uh, come to the podium and approach the council, you may do so. Priscilla. I forgot to fill out a card, I'm sorry. Good. But good evening, council members and Mr. Mayor. Um, my name is Priscilla and I'm from the Be Awesome Youth Coalition and I was just um, coming up to talk about the fact that um, alcohol is the number one used drug by teens in Maricopa nationwide. And according to some surveys, including the Arizona Youth Survey and our local um, Be Awesome survey that we do along with Sympatico Behavioral Health, um, the number one way that they're getting their alcohol here in Maricopa is at parties, and sometimes parents are even supplying it at these parties. And when we ask them, okay, so you used it, why'd you use it? They're like, to have fun. So we're like, okay, we can offer something better to our kids. So we've teamed up with Copa TV, and we're offering them the first ever community-wide tea dance. So it doesn't matter what school they go to, as long as they live in Maricopa, they can start connecting with kids in their community and come to this dance. And not only that, the people who are going to be supervising this dance are screened, trained, and have their best interest at heart. They aren't going to be providing them alcohol. Just fun. So, And thanks to our generous sponsors, some of them are here tonight, Mr. Wade and uh, Mrs. Gussie, as well as my Maricopa monitor, or plumber. 
We will be able to offer them a VIP lounge and Blackstone's Entertainment DJ, as well as some really fabulous prizes for the best ugly sweater. And we even have some kids who wanted to come. We have to charge to get in, but um, we have some generous donator, um, donors who um, purchased tickets for kids who otherwise couldn't come. So we want to thank you for your donation, Mrs. Chapados, as well as Miss Molly, who gave some. Um, and we were able to make some phone calls today and made some very happy kids. <laughs> so um, we just wanted to invite teenagers to come out if you guys are want to get involved donate help um, give us a call show up um, tickets are only ten dollars a person fifteen dollars for two or twenty dollars for four and you can buy them online at event um, what is Eventbrite or you can go to the be awesome youth coalition page you can text us we can send you um, a PayPal um, I have tickets on them my Maricopa plumber has some tickets on them you can pay cash credit we'll take it all and we hope to see you guys there thank you very much thank you Priscilla appreciate it I want to add something to that Councilman Wade. I just wanted to add there are flyers outside if you didn't get all the information right outside for you to take home to remember so thank you anyone else this time yes come on up Hello, I apologize. This is my first time ever doing this, so I didn't know anything about You're cards. Great. So thank you, Mayor, uh, City Council Member, and Residents of Maricopa. Greatly appreciate your time. I'm not here to put forth anything for anything that we're doing because um, BACA is totally anonymical, so we, we don't give out information of where we'll be and things that we'll be doing. But I wanted to give everyone a little bit of information about us. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We help abused children not feel afraid of the world in which they live. We do this by giving them the ability to have a voice back. And what we're doing here tonight is just trying to let everyone understand that we are not sons of anarchy. We're actually a group that is organized. We have to go through a complete NCIC background check. Everyone that's involved at any point in time has to pass that background check before they can even say, hi, my name is to a child. We go through about a year and a half to two years of training. Sawtooth Ridge has actually went through almost three before we were able to become fully patched members. Um, what we do is we will help these children by going to court with them. A lot of times when the perps have hurt the children, they will call in the entire family and make it to where they can intimidate the children or the family members. So we kind of become that barrier between the children and the person that has hurt them. We'll surround them in court, we'll walk them in. No one gets inside that circle unless that child says it's okay. Now if the family members of the perp or friends decide that they want to go past the house and intimidate the children that way, they can call and let us know. We tell them first of all to call the police because we deal directly with the police. We, we're kind of their second hand person. Um, we tell them to call the police first and then call us and they can let Baca know or let the police know that Baca's on their way. And then we'll actually stand guard outside that house 24 hours a day, seven days a week until that child is no longer living in fear. Um, we bring them into Baca, we give them their own little cut, it's blue jean. Um, they, get the, they get to pick their own road name or we can pick it for them. They get a blanket that we all fill with good thoughts and good love or whatever, prayers, things like that. We were also in, the, in Maricopa Magazine in September 2017. I know a lot of people in this room I've done presentations with. I'm the PR and uh, treasurer as well. So should you need a presentation done, feel free to get in contact with me. I'll come out and do presentations for whomever. And should you choose that you would like to make a donation to BACA, you can always get on the BACAworld.org uh, website or the Sawtooth Ridge chapter. We are in 47 states, 14 countries, 22 informing efforts. So you gotta know we're Sawtooth Ridge. And we, are, we have four chapters in the state of Arizona. So if you know someone that could use our assistance, our number is 877-235-7268. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Anyone else call to the public this time? 
Thank you very much for your participation this evening. We'll then move to item eight, which is the minutes for approval. City Council, can I have a motion to approve 8.1 and 8.2, please? I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Any further discussion on the minutes at this time? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. There are no public hearings at this time, so that'll move us to the consent agenda. Item 10, 10.1 uh, through 10.6. Uh, Council, we did not review this during the uh, previous work session. Was there anything that you wanted to touch on or talk about at this time prior to moving to approval? Okay. Can I have a motion, please? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. That will take us to item 11.1. .1. The Mayor and City Council shall hear a presentation by Donna Davis with Exec More Arizona entitled Air Arizona's Education Prog Progress. Sorry, this is for discussion only. Denise. Hi, <clears throat> good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the council. We sort of did things a little bit backwards this evening. We did the proclamation um, since we didn't have our regular work session. Uh, Donna Davis with Expect More Arizona was supposed to come out and <laughs> do a presentation then. But as an economic development practitioner, we are focused on several different areas, business retention and expansion, um, business attraction, small business development, marketing, and we also focus on building partnerships and relationships with our ed education sectors. And that's because we understand that today's youth are tomorrow's talented workforce. So uh, Donna Davis is a senior community engagement manager with Expect More Arizona, which is a statewide nonpartisan organization dedicated to ensuring every Arizona child has access to a world-class education from the early years through college and career. So please help me welcome Donna Davis. And I would like to introduce my partner in crime, Evelyn Kasuga. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Evelyn Kasuga. Tonight I'm wearing the Center for the Future of Arizona hat. As you probably heard, we are in partnership with Expect More Arizona to promote this notion of Achieve 60. And thank you, Denise Earhart, your economic development director, for allowing, getting us in here tonight. Because that talent pipeline, as you all know, is going to be so critical to economic development success in the city of Maricopa, as well as the entire Pinal County in the state of Arizona, and education is where it starts. And we have a mission, because I happen to live here, just down the road here in Pinal County, we are going to get every single city and town, in, including the county, and, and Supervisor Smith was part of that, so we have, we're close to getting all of our cities and towns adopting this proclamation, because it is so important to the, the vitality of this area. So in representing Center for the Future of Arizona, we are another nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. A lot of you probably know uh, Dr. Laddie Coor, who is the President Emeritus of Arizona State University. It is his vision and his mission to kind of raise awareness of citizen goals, and education is just one of them. So we're so proud, and I've already tweeted out that you did this tonight, so we'll get that on the, we'll get that in the, in, in, on the internet. So thank you for accomplishing that. I'm I'm going to leave it to Donna to explain the progress meter and how it impacts all of us. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Evelyn. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I'm here tonight to talk to you about the progress meter, the Arizona Education Progress Meter. And Denise, as soon as I figure out how to, okay. Okay, great. All right. So as Denise stated, we believe that every child in Arizona deserves a, an excellent education every step of the way. And we all know that strong classrooms make strong communities. So it's imperative that we support education throughout the community. Um, the progress meter was launched last year, about a year and a half ago, as a tool to help um, Arizonans know where we stand in eight different metrics. We had 40 launch partners with us when we started, and we partnered with the Center for the Future of Arizona to come up with the statistics and to see where we are so that we could kind of set goals for where we want to go. Um, this is like when we started. Um, currently, in Arizona, only 22% of our three and four-year-olds have access to an, a quality early learning experience. About 78% of our high school students graduate, we have 15% of our youth between the ages of 16 and 24 who are not enrolled in school and who are not working. 
That is a high national statistic, that's high for our nation. Our statistic here in Arizona is high compared to the rest of the nation. Um, the most concerning, one of the most concerning statistics in these metrics was the 42% attainment level that our adults between the ages of 25 and 64 here in Arizona, here in Arizona, only 42% of them have either a two-year degree, a four-year degree, or an industry certification. And quite honestly, our workforce requires that 68% of our citizens have some kind of training beyond high school. So we are nowhere near to that 68%. So last September, um, about 40 different organizations came together. The governor was kind of the spokesperson. And we started this initiative called Achieve 60, indicating that we would, wanted to set a goal that 60% of our adults have one of those degrees or credentials to foster economic development in our state. So the progress meter has become a shared vision and a plan for education in our state. And once we set that 60% goal, we decided that really in order to meet that 60% goal, we had to take a look at how many students do we need, what percentage of our students do we need to have graduating from high school to make that 60%? What percentage of our students do we need to go on past high school to enroll immediately after high school into some kind of a post-secondary opportunity? How many of our students do we need to have enrolled in a quality early learning experience to make that 60% goal? So last August, we came out with um, goals for every single one of the 50 metrics. Um, they're all achievable, we think, and we've had committees of experts look at each of these goals. And so um, we plan to meet seven of the goals by 2030. The one goal that we hope we meet earlier than that is the teacher pay goal because here in Arizona, we just completed a study with Morrison Institute, which really was, um, was adjusted for cost of living allowances, and our teachers um, pay is, our median elementary teacher pay is 50th in the nation. And so it becomes a real teacher recruitment issue for our entire state, and we do have a huge teacher crisis. So we feel like when we have shared goals, we can make progress. And this Arizona Education Progress Meter is being used by lots of entities in the community. Um, the State Board of Education and the, and the Department of Education used the progress meter in our ESSA plan, our Every Student Succeeds federal plan. School districts are using it for their strategic plans. Funders are using it to make funding decisions. And we are pleased and proud to announce that a lot of our cities and towns have adopted the progress meter. This is a list of most of them. There's some that aren't on this list yet. We, uh, Evelyn and I went to Apache Junction just a couple of weeks ago, and so they have been added to this list, and there are some others that have been added as well. But as Evelyn indicated, um, we are grateful to Evelyn, who lives in this county, and she has gotten a lot of the cities and towns in this county to sign on with proclamations or resolutions. So everyone has a role to play. And um, one of the issues that will be coming up soon is Prop 301, which is 0.6% of our sales tax that is used to fund education in our state. That expires in 2020, and voters will be asked to make a decision on supporting that 0.6% or perhaps increasing that. There's um, groups looking at that prop proposition right now to determine what that should look like. So um, we are excited to have you as one of our partners in this effort to support education, and I will take any questions that anybody might have. Council questions? Yes, we'll go to uh, Council Member Wade and Council Member Brown. <coughs> uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I appreciate it, and it's good, always good to see Evelyn visiting us as well. <laughs> um, have you had any conversations with the Maricopa Unified School District uh, in reference to the uh, program and, and how did that come about? Yes. Um, actually, we, I met with um, um, Superintendent Chestnut a while ago, and they, at that time, had just won a national award of some kind, and I can't even remember what it was, but we ended up doing a story and posting it on our website about that award that they had won. So they are a partner with us. They've been a partner with us for six months to a year, at least. Mm -hmm. Councilman Brown. I noticed that the governor's name is, uh, not his name, title is on that list of supporters. And it seems to me, if, along with the Arizona S S Supreme Court's mandate and the governor's support, 
if the legislators were to line up behind this, many of those categories, much sooner than 2030, would be resolved. So it seems to me you, you probably need a lobbyist to help that. That has been very dynamic through the years of previous hats she wore. So I, God bless you that you have her on board. But uh, the answer is with the legislature. I totally agree with you, sir. <laughs> um, we, we promote advocacy as part of our, I mean, advocacy is what we do. And so we do a lot of education of citizens about their role in, um, you know, communicating with their public officials and letting them know how they feel about education in our state. And, and um, so we, we do our best. And, and we do have, while well, we have had, we did have, a lobbyist on our behalf. Um, he recently left our organization, so, but I'm sure we'll be hiring somebody else. Thank you. Council, other questions this time? Yes, Council Morgasi. Within your metrics, have you guys addressed the digital divide? The fact that a lot of our students are having issues with getting high speed internet, and there's been some talk in DC about these issues? Yes, we have. And actually, the Department of Education recently secured a grant to offer to get broadband throughout the state. And that will, that will be a huge, that will make a huge impact in our state once we can get everybody connected. So yes, you're right. That, that is definitely an issue. I would say that that's a huge issue. And the teacher crisis is the other huge issue that really impacts these statistics. So when do you see the implementation of the broadband? Oh, boy. I. I think that um, school districts had to apply for the money by um, April of 2018. So um, hopefully so soon after that. And are you communicating this information to, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yes, right. yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. Other questions, Council? Thank you very much for your presentation and Thank for being you. here. We really appreciate it for Thank all the work you. you're doing. Thank you. Thanks for your support. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Evelyn. Appreciate it. That'll take us to item 11.2. Uh, the Mayor and City Council shall discuss the possible action to approve the First Amendment to the contract agreement with Pat Patricia Lacombe. Uh, this is for help in purchasing. Uh, Patricia tried to retire, and then we ripped her out of retirement and made her come back and forced her into uh, working for us. But uh, no, we, uh, we appreciate all your help. So Brenda, take it away. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. As Mayor Price said, we have brought Patty back a couple times to help us out of retirement. Um, we had previously done a contract with Patty um, to get us through this year to cover the position that was vacated when our purchasing coordinator left. Um, we are in the process of hiring that position. We have first interviews scheduled in a couple of weeks. The backlog of projects within the purchasing department has continued to grow. It seems for every project we take off the list, we add two or three. Um, we had previously requested, um, let me back up. Patty has requested her contract to be limited to $35,000, which will get us approximately through the month of March with Patty on a part-time, three-quarter time basis, um, working with her kind of retirement schedule. Um, previously, I had come to council and requested a um, temporary personnel through um, Robert Half, we, who we have continued to utilize. She's done a phenomenal job, and the list of contracts is continuing to grow that need to be monitored through either um, resolicitation or just um, new contracts on an annual basis. So um, my request tonight is for uh, approval of the contract for Patricia Lacombe not to exceed $35,000 with an additional um, $25,000 for um, additional temporary help once Patty's um, contract expires and a contingency transfer in the amount of $60,000. Thank you, Brenda. Council, questions? Yes, Vice Mayor. Thanks for the presentation, Brenda. Patty is an invaluable asset. She's been a valued member of our team for a lot of years. So, Mayor, I move to approve this item. I have a motion. Is there a second? Support. I have a second here uh, by Council Member Brown. Uh, any further discussion, Council? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. 
Thank you very much, Brenda. Uh, item 11.3, the Mayor and Council should discuss possible take action and approve the two-year contract for calendars 2017 and 2018 with the HR Workplace Services to produce the mandatory individualized employee tax forms associated with the Affordable Care Act. This is uh, for an approval for a budgetary transfer in the amount of $9,600 from contingency. Honorable Mayor, members of the Council, in 2015, the city retained HR Workplace Services through the Mahoney Group in our health, health and benefits um, through HR. They assist us with the preparation of the Affordable Care Act forms that are required to be filed and distributed to employees. Previously, um, this contract had been covered and contracted through the Mahoney Group, therefore it has not previously been budgeted in either HR or finance. That's why we're requesting the um, $9,600 for um, calendar year 2017 and calendar year 2018. I see. Any questions? Council? Yes. Council Magasa. Move to approve. I have a motion to approve. And a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Item 11.4, this is uh, really a cleanup bill or a cleanup code. Uh, the ordinance of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Maricopa, Arizona, amending section 18-4-2 of the Maricopa City Code regarding pets at parks owned and operated by the City of Maricopa and providing for the severability and the effective date thereof. This is for discussion and action. Fred, take it away. Okay, uh, thank you, Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, as you indicated, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, this is a cleanup from some more recent actually uh, amendments to the ordinance I believe on in May 2nd of uh, May uh, 2nd of 2017 and this uh, indicates clearly just adding some language that we have existing rules and regulations on our signs at the parks uh, but it does not include some things for pol police to enforce if it's not in the ordinance to do so so our rules don't necessarily correspond with the ordinance and so this is merely asking for amendment to the ordinance such that the rules uh, will be covered in the ordinance and uh, America Police Department and Animal Control can appropriately enforce those rules and regulations. Perfect. Questions on that? Yes. Councilmember Wade. Thank you, Fred. Just one quick uh, mm -hmm. question. Uh, the signs are going to have to be adjusted, I take it. Is there a, a timetable for that to be taken care of? Yeah, Honorable Mayor, uh, Members of Council, Councilmember Wade. Uh, yes, we'll have to update the sign to put the language on there, the actual ordinance on there to do that. I'm not sure, Mike, do we know how long that will take? We'll do it as soon as possible so that we can get that done. The rules and regulations are there. What's necessary is to add uh, the ordinance number in there so that it appropriately can be uh, cited if necessary. Any additional questions? Seeing none, can I have a motion to approve, please? So moved, Mr. Mayor. I have a motion and a second. Mr. Mayor. Uh, any further discussion? Mr. Mayor. If not, we'll move to roll call. <laughs> Councilmember Smith. Councilmember Wade? Yes. Vice Mayor Chapados? Yes. Councilmember Brown? Yes. Councilmember Manfredi? Yes. Councilwoman Gussie? Yes. Mayor Price? Yes. Mr. Mayor, motion passes. Thank you very much. The motion passes. And that'll take us to item 11.5. The Mayor and City Council shall discuss the possible take action to name Patricia Sorensen as the interim city manager and to authorize the mayor to execute an agreement with her in the amount not to exceed 10000 per month to be paid from the general fund, city manager, professional, and occupational. As I mentioned earlier, city manager Rose is leaving us. And so uh, one of the things that uh, the City Council does is, you know, unbeknownst to many people, is that we have a council manager form of government here in the city of Maricopa. And as such, uh, the council actually hires and fires three people, the city magistrate, the city attorney, and the city manager. And so um, at this time, as uh, city manager Rose is leaving us, it falls back to us as the employers to uh, look to find somebody else to fulfill that uh, measure until we can find a permanent replacement. Uh, and so council, we have uh, reached out through our negotiated efforts and reached this uh, contractual agreement. Uh, I believe the applicant is interested in this and has signed it if we are willing to approve it. So uh, with that, can I have any questions to Discussion and or motions at this time. So moved. Have a motion. Second. Is there a second? There is the second. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Congratulations to Trisha Sorensen. And uh, again, we will miss City Manager Rose, but uh, uh, we'll keep this uh, the ship going. So with that, thank you very much for attending this evening. We appreciate you coming to our uh, festivities earlier and for sticking around. Mr. Council, uh, you are not quite done, and we need a motion to move to E-Session. So move, Mr. Mayor. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. We'll stand adjourned.
so the 13-year-olds